I'm gonna teach you five key elements behind becoming a world-class thrower, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from throwsuniversity.com, and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in improving your glide technique, you wanna enhance your rotational technique in the discus, or you wanna learn how to improve your spin technique in the shot put, make sure you like, you subscribe and you ring that notification bell so that we can help you become a champion. So over the last four years, we've worked with some of the best discus throwers in the entire world. We've coached Alex Rose to the Olympics to multiple world championships. We've taken Sam Mattis from winning an NCAA title to all the way to winning a US national title and qualifying for the world final. And a lot of people have asked us, what does it take to become a world-class thrower? So let's go right into that first key aspect, especially when we're talking about a discus thrower like Sam Mattis. That first key aspect is we've got to recognize the importance of technical improvement. So Sam is one of the best discus throwers ever coming out of the United States, and he has the American NCAA record in the discus. And one of the biggest issues that we had with Sam is that he, when he came out of the NCA, he could drop mo monster, monster bombs. He had a PR of 67 plus meters. But one of the downfalls was that he was a little bit erratic. He would have some meets that were 67 meters, and in the same season, he would drop down to below 60 meters. So his top end potential was phenomenal, but to be a world-class thrower, you've got to throw close to your PR on a regular basis. You've got to be very, very consistent. And one of the biggest things that we've done with Sam over the last four years is improve his ability to make his top end repeatable. So that has enhanced his technique. We've gotten to the point where he could go to the U.S. National Championships and win the U.S. National title and earn himself a spot on that world championship team on his very first throw. That second key aspect, especially with Sam, is developing strength and power. And a lot of people forget, not only are we gonna be developing strength and power, but when we're training properly in the weight room, we should be improving mobility, especially if we're talking about discus throwers. We've gotta see good trunk rotation, good thoracic rotation. And that's something that Sam does very, very well, is he improves his strength, he improves his power output. He's power clean 400 pounds. He's power snatched over 300 pounds. He's snatched over 150 kilos, so over 330 pounds. He's done behind the neck jerk with 500 pounds. So he's done a tremendous amount of strength work that has also enhanced his power development and his rate of force development, all while improving his mobility so that he can take that strength, he can take that power and implement that into his technique. The next two key elements behind becoming a world-class thrower, specifically a world-class discus thrower, is having a competitive mindset and that mental maturation. So I'd like to pair these two together and utilizing Sam as a really good example, what we've seen him become over the last four years is a phenomenal competitor. He's able to deal with stress much easier and he's been able to take all of his stress from competition and also take that and mature over time mentally. And what this, if we can think about that mental maturation, that's a little bit more in regard to his entire holistic approach to training. He takes eating seriously. He takes doing mobility work seriously. He takes recovery seriously. He takes his sleep so seriously that he even monitors the quality of his sleep. And on top of that, that has a positive impact on his his competitive mindset. Now, when we go to world championships in Doha, where he's got a warm up outside in 110 degree weather, and he puts his first throw into the cage, he knows it went into the cage because it came off of his hand because of how hot it was. In the past, that might have defeated Sam, that might have put him down a little bit, but he dealt with that issue, and instead, he calmed down, he hit a couple good warm up throws outside, and then he went into the holding room. And one of the biggest aspects that I've noticed as his coach is also during that competitive mindset, he's recognized that if you're gonna compete at the world stage, you have to warm up and then you might cool down when you're put into that holding area. And then when you get out onto the circle, you only get two warm up throws. And on top of that, 
even in Doha where the circle wasn't the best, everybody's competing in that same circle. In the past, Sam would have complained about that circle. He would have almost acted as though the circle was preventing him from throwing far. Whereas now, he does not care. And that's a huge jump for a competitor to sit there and say, everybody's throwing in the same circle. Everybody's situation is very similar. I've got to deal with it. I've got to mature as an athlete and have a much better approach to the sport in general. And then when I'm in that competitive state, I have to have those key factors that I'm going to go to and I'm going to have my repeatable technique. And in turn, I'm going to compete as well as I possibly can. And that's what he did this past year in Doha, where he threw 63 high and almost made that top eight in the entire world. Whoa. There you go, Sam! There you go! That last key aspect behind throwing at the world-class level, especially with Sam, is, is just having a coach and having a guide. And one of the biggest things that I pride myself on is being part of Sam's development, seeing him grow up, seeing him become a great competitor. And that's something that I was fortunate enough to have taken the reins over from his father. His father was an incredible coach to Sam. His father was an incredible guide to him throughout his NCAA career, throughout his scholastic career in high school. He's a phenomenal discus thrower already when I got him. But one of the things that I pride myself on is that he and I see each other in a democratic method. He and I both discuss where we're trying to go with technique, where we want to go with strength, where we want to go with that power development and how we're going to approach the season from this big picture perspective. And I think it's very, very important for every elite thrower to have some type of coach and guide that can help them work through and troubleshoot different issues in their technique and ultimately work down the road so that they can make the Olympics and make that world championships. So if you like this information about elite world-class training, click on this video right here. Until next time, guys, peace.